Hi folks, last project on the Mars Curiosity rover, making this ring gear that supports the head of the rover where it intersects with the body. We're gonna make two of these at once using the super glue technique in a single setup, one and done. Let's talk about some tips and tricks, speeds and feeds, and how we got this done. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Starting with the same size raw material from last week's differential bar, we're super flying it down to get a finished surface. This will be the underside, and it ensures we've got a really flat surface for the super glue trick. One of the things to remember with the super glue trick is the sandwich of part, then tape, then super glue, then tape, then fixture. We've continued to love this technique. We have found a single better super glue for flood coolant. So card here to the page where as we learn more things or find different or better products, we're keeping that one up to date. The stock on hand is slightly too thick, no big deal. We're gonna use the Superfly to deck it down to nominal part size. Again, this is finished size. We're gonna pull the parts completely done, ready to ship from this one setup. If you're new to machining, almost every CNC mill in the world has some amount of tram air. That means the head is tipped a little to the left or a little to the right. We'll tend to notice this on larger diameter tools like the Superfly. So try cutting from left to right and then try cutting from right to left. One of those directions will likely give you a slightly better surface finish, or rather won't have that slight backside whisper cut. Stepping up to a 3 8 inch end mill with an adaptive strategy to rough out the majority of this material. Now this is interesting. Jared really likes using the 3 8 inch end mills here. We're running at 10,000 RPMs, 2 thousandths of an inch feed per tooth, and I have no problem with that, but if you're new to machining or you're new to a Tormach, I would recommend using a quarter inch. Three eighth inch can work really well, but the larger the diameter, the more likely it is you may incur chatter or higher tool pressure or just have problems. And that tool is all that much more expensive and you can run quarter inch tools far harder than most people realize. So stay away from the larger diameters unless you really know what you're doing or you need a really long depth of cut. With the majority of the material removed, we'll quickly do our spot and drill. Like we talked about in last week's widget though, if you're doing a lot of holes, find those split point 135 degree drills. You can get rid of spot drilling and save yourself a lot of time. On the flip side, you can see here, we spotted just deep enough to pre-chamfer that hole. Drilling at 200 service feet per minute and about 1,000th of an inch feed per revolution. Two Fusion 360 cam tips and tricks. When you're doing a 2D or 3D adaptive, make sure on the last tab linking, you have no engagement feed rate set to your machine's maximum feed rate. That will help speed it up when it's moving back or card here to the video where we talk about when it makes sense to use both ways adaptive. The other is you can control how small of an area the tool will navigate through. So here you can see it's quite small you can control that under the passes tab with the minimum cutting radius. Sometimes you'll wanna leave that to a higher value because you'll come back in with another tool later to get rid of that material. Cleaning up those inside bores. If this were a really tight tolerance, you'll wanna to use something like cutter comp. Card here to the page where we walk through how you can use cutter comp to stay at the machine and walk that out and really hold pretty tight tolerances. Finally, switching to a 1 8 inch end mill. 
We're using 2D contour to clean out these pockets. Now, a lot of times I would use a second adaptive strategy. And in that adaptive strategy, I would have checked rest machining. So that would calculate where it needs to do cutting and avoid cutting air. And most importantly, it would make sure that it's never going to take too much of a cut because on any small tool that can break the tool. But rest machining tends to take a fair amount of computer calculating power. And sometimes I just want to get the part machine. So what we're doing here is just simple 2D contour but we have roughing passes enabled. So we're taking two passes of about 12 thousandths of an inch and we have multiple depths enabled. We're keeping our depth of cut to 40 thousandths of an inch or about 33% of the tool diameter. One of the keys when you're using the super glue technique is make use of tabbing. Under this 2D contour, edit, geometry, just check the tabs box and then you can pick the points where you want to leave the tabs of your size, width, and height. What that does is by leaving pretty small tabs, you're maintaining the strength across the whole surface area that's super glued down, not the relatively small area that's left of our workpiece. And finally, coming in with a 1 16th end mill, and instead of an adaptive, we're doing roughing passes on a 2D contour, three passes of 6 thousandths of an inch. Takes a little bit longer, but one and done here. I'd rather not babysit the part, and I definitely don't want to break a tool. After a quick chamfer, coming back to our 1 16th end mill to do the final depth of cut to machine away those tabs. And we're done. Use a box cutter or a flat knife to separate the part from our super glue, clean it off, and throw them in the box to ship out.